Hey guys, I'm so glad you guys could join me for this next bit of science that we're going to do. Specifically, we're going to talk about the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. And what is it and how do we use it? So, let's quickly review what we're going to learn today and then we'll go over what we're actually going to learn. So, today's lesson breakdown is we're going to review what change in temperatures, change in concentration and change in catalysts mean when you look at a Boltzmann curve. But let's quickly review what a Boltzmann curve first is. So, a Maxwell-Boltzmann curve, shortened to Boltzmann curve, is just easily allowing us to show, if you look at the EA at the bottom here, this is kinetic energy at the bottom here, shows an increase. This is increasing in energy at the bottom versus the number of particles with a relative energy. So, that means as you go up here, that means more particles. And let me quickly draw for you how, what this actually shows. This says that every particle, if we remember back to what we were looking at a bit earlier, this entire thing has a whole bunch of particles that are inside of your little flask that you're looking at, for instance. In that flask, every one of these particles has an associated amount of energy with it, EK. And what we've done with Boltzmann curve is we've plotted and counted how many as each one has how much energy. So here, let's say this is 10 uh, units worth of energy. And now we've been counted how many particles have 10 units of energy. It isn't, this is just a figurative example, just to show you that in this example here, 100 particles ended up having 10 units of energy and then we have 11, 12 and so on going down the list and each one has an associated number of number of particles that have that relative energy. Okay but now you see here there's this dotted line. Now you must be asking yourself and this filled in area here what does that all mean? Well in this case here that dotted line there represents a very specific number and if you remember back with rates of reaction in mind we had to have sufficient energy for an effective collision to have. And that's exactly what the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve shows us. With this dotted line here, it shows us the distribution of particles, as we remember here, this is number of particles with a certain amount of energy. So this says the line with where, the, this is where, if a particle has more energy than this, it can undergo an effective collision. So what happens is the shaded in area that you see here, merely means this is the amount of particles that have sufficient energy to create an effective collision. So, let's quickly look at how we affect the rate of reaction using the Boltzmann curve. So, let's consider a change in temperature, right? Consider a change in temperature. We have our original Boltzmann curve that we have in the previous example with temperature T1. Okay, so follow along with me now. Let's define a new temperature. Well, let's say we heat up the flask that we were using, right? that T2, temperature 2, and that means that the particles within the little box that I drew earlier, our flask that we were looking at, they start moving around with more energy. They start having more energy, EK. They have sufficient energy to have an effective collision. Well, there plots the new curve. T2 represents what will happen in terms of the distribution of particles. What does this really mean? Well, if you look here, and this, this was sometime, let's say, at 10, right? This is the 10 units of energy. Well, here now, there's, that started off with, let's say, 100 particles. Now, if we draw the line a bit further down, you can see at T2, there's now fewer. Well, what, that, what happened to those particles now that at T2? But look, the curve, the curve of T2 went down a little bit and to the right a bit. Or, in this case here, I'm oh, sorry, left for you guys. Now, the maximum point here is now sitting here. But look what's most interesting. The number of particles with sufficient energy to go through an, an effective collision has doubled or even tripled depending on how much the temperature has increased. So remember back to rates of reaction. An increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction. The Boltzmann curve gives us graphical evidence to that point. So look here. Now all of this, all these particles here can now undergo an effective collision. Awesome. So let's look at the next possible type of change that we have to take into consideration. And that one is concentration. Okay, so let's consider a change in concentration. This time, we're looking at, again, the same set of particles we had above. With dot, 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 all over the place, right? And they're sitting here. They have concentration one. Concentration is how closely packed are they? Well, now what happens if we introduce a new concept? C1 is less than C2. So now we increase the volume or the pressure of the system. That means we push them together. So let's see what happens. What does the new Boltzmann curve look like? Well, it increased and that makes sense, doesn't it? Because right now to increase the number of particles in the thing with energy, we've had to increase the volume. So if we look at this example here, 
Look at how all of a sudden with concentration two, the number of peak here has almost, not doubled, but it's gone up a significant amount. If it was at 100 here, it's now let's say at 120. But look most importantly here at the EK. The EK hasn't changed. Again, we remember that from the first time we did it. This entire example means that now, again, we've increased the number of particles with sufficient energy to go through an effective collision. So let me say that again. They have sufficient EK to go through an effective collision. And what that means again is that we can increase the rate of reaction. Okay, so let's look at the final example that we have, adding a catalyst. Again, we have our original Boltzmann curve with just the standard here with our EK matched here. That again is our activation energy required for an effective collision. So this is how many particles we have that can go undergo an effective collision. And let's add that catalyst. And then you see, remember what a catalyst does. It adds, to, it doesn't add anything. It doesn't take any, anything away from the, the reaction. All that happens here is that we lower the activation energy of the system. What does that mean? That means that our original EK that's here shifted back a bit. What that, in the entirety, it means that more particles here can now undergo an effective collision and therefore increase the rate of reaction. Isn't that awesome? So let's quickly finish off this, this section here with a lesson review. A change in temperature, if we look at our graph like that, just basically if that was our original curve, pushed our particles forward, gave them enough energy to go through. At change in concentration, this increased the number of particles we had. So if this was our original curve, it gave us double the amount that we had. Or depending on how much you've added, it increases the curve as you can see above. So the final one is the catalyst. The catalyst doesn't do anything other than change the activation energy of the curve we already have. So there's our curve and there's our original EA value. All that the catalyst does is shift that EA value down. And that's everything you need to know about Boltzmann curve. So when you get asked any questions about this and they give you a Boltzmann curve to ask you to understand what happened, remember the different forms that these different curves took and that'll answer your question for you. Thank you guys so much for coming to join me. Let's see what we can do in this section right now.